underlying mathematical principles, which is far greater than most other people. Well, you know, we all think we're very smart, and he's so much smarter than the rest of us. In 1995, string theorists from all over the world gathered at the University of Southern California for their annual conference. Ed Witten showed up at Strings 95 and rocked their world. I was really trying to think of something that would be significant for the occasion. And actually, since five string theories was too many, I thought I would try to get rid of some of them. To solve the problem, Witten constructed a spectacular new way of looking at string theory. Ed announced that he had thought about it, and moreover, he had solved it. He was going to tell us a solution to every string theory in every dimension, which was an enormous claim. But coming from Ed, it was not so surprising. The atmosphere was electric because all of a sudden, string theory, which had been going through kind of doldrums, was given an incredible boost, a shot in the arm. Ed Witten gave his famous lecture, and he said a couple of words that got me interested. And for the rest of the lecture, I got hooked up on the first few words that he said and completely missed the point of, uh, of his lecture. I remember I had to give the talk after him, and I was kind of embarrassed, too. <laughs> Ed Witten just blew everybody away. Ed Witten blew everybody away because he provided a completely new perspective on string theory. From this point of view, we could see that there weren't really five different theories. Like reflections in a wall of mirrors, what we thought were five theories turned out to be just five different ways of looking at the same thing. String theory was unified at last. Witten's work sparked a breakthrough so revolutionary that it was given its own name, M-theory, although no one really knows what the M stands for. Ah, uh, what is the M for? M-theory. 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 M-theory is a theory. Uh, I don't actually know what the M stands for. Well, the M has... I've heard many descriptions. Mystery theory, magic theory. It's the mother theory. Matrix theory. Monstrous theory. I don't know what, I don't know what Ed meant. M stands for magic, mystery, or matrix, according to taste. I suspect that the M is an upside-down W for Witten. Some cynics have occasionally suggested that M may also stand for murky, because our level of understanding of the theory is, in fact, so primitive. Maybe I shouldn't have told you that one. <laughs> Whatever the name, it was a bombshell. Suddenly, everything was different. There was a lot of panic, if you like, realizing that big things were happening and, and all of us not wanting to get left behind in this new revolution of string theory. After Witten's talk, there was renewed hope that this one theory could be the theory to explain everything in the universe. But there was also a price to pay. Before M-theory, strings seemed to operate in a world with 10 dimensions. These included one dimension of time, the three familiar space dimensions, as well as six extra dimensions curled up so tiny that they're completely invisible. But well, we think these extra dimensions exist because they come out of the equations of string theory. Strings need to move in more than three dimensions. And that was a shock to everybody, but then we learned to live with it. But M-theory would go even further, demanding yet another spatial dimension, bringing the grand total to 11, 11 dimensions. We know that there have to be 11 dimensions for this theory to make sense. So there must be 11 dimensions we only see three plus one of them. How is that possible? For most of us, it's virtually impossible to picture the extra higher dimensions. I can't. And it's not surprising. Our brains evolve sensing just the three spatial dimensions of everyday experience. So how can we get a feel for them? 
One way is to go to the movies. We're all familiar with the real world having three spatial dimensions. That is, anywhere I go, I can move left, right, back, forth, or up, down. But in the movies, things are a bit different. Even though the characters on a movie screen look three-dimensional, they actually are stuck in just two dimensions. There is no back, forth on a movie screen. That's just an optical illusion. To really move in the back fourth dimension, I'd have to step out of the screen. And sometimes, moving into a higher dimension can be a useful thing to do. So, dimensions all have to do with the independent directions in which you can move. They're sometimes called degrees of freedom. The more dimensions or degrees of freedom you have, the more you can do. That's right. And if there really are 11 dimensions, then strings can do a lot more, too. People found fairly soon that there were objects that lived in these theories, which weren't just strings, but were larger than that. They actually looked like membranes or surfaces. The extra dimension Witten added allows a string to stretch into something like a membrane, or a brain for short. A brain could be three-dimensional, or even more. And with enough energy, a brain could grow to an enormous